right, so I made some pretty big progress the other day. Took off the grill, bumper, and now the fenders. And you can see the original color here, which is Regent Silver, I think is what it was called. The inner fender wells are in great shape. The only place I really have rust is in the battery tray, which I will repair. The one from my parts car, it also had rust in the battery tray. So I'm gonna keep on disassembling basically and peel away the parts until I get everything off the front end here. I'll take the fender wells off. Uh, radiator support. So I'll have to drain the radiator, and then eventually get to the point where I can pull the engine out. All right, I got the radiator support off and the inner fenders. And I didn't try to make a video of every bolt that you gotta take off. I just recommend when you're doing this, you just, uh, you just look around and find the bolts. There's nothing unusual about it. I always try to make a point to put the bolts back in the holes. That way I don't lose them and I know exactly where they go. It's not a big mystery when it comes time to put it back together. You can see I did it on all these. Also, I'm going to be rebuilding the front suspension while I got this car taken apart like this. You can see why it's a lot easier to do while there's no fenders and stuff on there. And I'm going to clean the whole frame up, paint it, clean up under the hood as much as possible and be swapping the engine out. Try to get everything back as nicely as possible. One thing kind of unusual about these cars is the way the hood, the hood hinges are mounted. I've got the inner fenders off and the lower ones are loose, but these things will still hold even with the ones mounted on the firewall. This hood's definitely a two man hood. Right now I don't have two men to help me get it off, but I'm gonna take it off. But uh. On my Impala, I could lift the hood by myself and actually put it on and off by myself a bunch of times. This car is definitely not the same. This hood weighs a lot more. But anyway, I'm going to continue removing stuff. Uh, like I said, I'm to the point of uh, starting to remove all the accessories off the engine. And then I'll remove the engine. One thing I wanted to show that I, I knew this was like this because I, I had seen it before, but somebody back in the day, it had a broken motor mount. So they bolted it to the bottom of the, uh, they bolted a chain to the bottom of the uh, manifold that goes from head to head with the water in it. And they welded it to the frame. So their motor mount was this. I bought new motor mounts for it, but it's actually not the first time I've seen that. I guess that was a quick fix for people who didn't have the money or weren't able to get it at the time. But yeah, that's where we're at. Making good progress. So I got the engine removed from the car. And as you can see, I got a lot of cleaning up to do. This is very nasty. This thing has been I'd say since 1967 they were cleaned. Transmission is extremely disgusting. I'm not going to be cleaning this engine. I'm going to be putting it on a stand because that engine is going to go in it eventually. But all these parts got to be cleaned up. And I'm going to clean up the whole area here and replace the suspension parts. You see again the the worn out up control arm. I don't know if a lot of people know about this, if you haven't rebuilt one yet, but this is where you adjust your camber. You see that nut there on the bottom of the upper control arm? That's something that's kind of different on the Cadillac that I haven't seen. Anyway, everything looks in good shape. I just got a lot of cleaning up to do. I'm gonna be using a couple different things to clean it. I bought some, uh, couple different things, some super 
I don't know what it's called, super cleaner or something. Let's see. Super clean. I bought some super clean. And I bought some brake cleaner. I know brake cleaner works a lot better. Super clean's probably cheaper. I don't know how much how well it's gonna work. I'll let you know. But all this is gonna be cleaned up and painted. It's probably gonna take me days to do this. There's a lot of cleaning to do. So I ended up using Super Clean that I bought at Lowe's. It worked really well. It took me probably an hour and a half to clean the transmission, but it was completely coated in grease. Also cleaned these parts with it. They came out really good. It's fairly, fairly easy. I used a, uh, basically a stiff toothbrush. Still working on, on this part here. You can see I kind of got a lot of the grease off of it. There's still a lot there. The whole thing is covered. But it's coming along. It's working pretty good. Super clean is what I used. Bought it in the gallon size. Used it at full strength. Pretty happy with the results of it. It's not as expensive as brake cleaner. But it still works just about as good. I also figured out that certain types of brake cleaners are not very good at all. The ones that's non-flammable. Lowe's, the one that Lowe's sold, CRC. It was not a good cleaner. I, I used one can of it and it didn't work as good as the Super Clean. So I usually order the one off Amazon. I'll put it in the link. I buy it by the case and it's a lot cheaper if you buy by 24. But uh, I'll put the links to both of them on there. With the super clean, you got to scrub a good bit, but it works pretty good.